In this video, we're going to look at an important theorem about fields that has a very easy proof. So I want to start by stating the theorem. The theorem says the following. Let F be a field. Then the only ideals in F are the trivial ideals the zero ideal, and F itself. I would like you to stop the video, try to prove this theorem for yourself because the proof is not very hard. If you get stuck or once you think you have a draft proof, start the video back up and compare your proof to mine. Hopefully you've done that. Here's how my proof runs. The first thing that I want to do is I want to observe that since F is a field, we know that there is a 1 in F, there is a 0 in F, and I know that the 1 and the 0 are different elements. That's part of the definition of field in the textbook that we're using this summer. Uh, let's see, the next thing that I want to do is I want to simply let I be any ideal of my field F. And I do want to make a note that because I is an ideal, I is clearly a subset of F. Now, uh, I'm going to assume that I is not the zero ideal. Now, that's going to imply that uh, there exists something inside my ideal with that element not being equal to the zero ideal. But um, I also want to observe a in i and a not equal to zero together imply that a is a non-zero element of my field. And every non-zero element has a multiplicative inverse. So a inverse exists inside f. In other words, we have an a inverse and a times A inverse equals A inverse times A, and both of these are known to be the one inside the field. And I want to stare at this product just a little bit, because if I look at that product fairly closely, I get an important result. So I want to look at it this way. We're going to make the following note. We know that 1 is equal to a inverse times a. And I also know that this a is inside the ideal i, and that a inverse is inside the field f. So the definition of ideal places that product inside the ideal. So this is by definition of ideal. Uh, so what I know now is that 1 definitely belongs to my ideal. Well, that's got some pretty important consequences. So let's look at what that particular consequence means. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let little f be any element of my field. And I want to recall, of course, that 1 belongs to the ideal i. We just got done showing that. And of course, we know that f is equal to f times 1. And again, this 1 is inside the ideal i, and this f is inside the field f. So the definition of ideal places that product inside i by the definition of ideal. And so what we've shown is that if F is inside capital F, then F is inside I. In other words, we now have F is a subset of I. And since I is an ideal of F, we also already know that I is a subset of F. And these two things together imply that F is indeed equal to the ideal i. 
In other words, what we've done is we've shown that we, we have finished the proof of our theorem, and I just want to recall that what this theorem says is that the only ideals of a field are the trivial ones. And the trivial ones, of course, are the zero ideal and the field itself.